Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. To put us in a national spot like this and say this is what North Dakota is all about is just humiliating. It's awful because it's not who we are. And these people need to stop sending that message. Community members speaking out after a North Dakota anti-discrimination law goes down to defeat. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Strong opinions on both sides about yesterday's vote in the North Dakota House, which proponents say would have protected against sexual discrimination. Now, some are saying it's embarrassing, giving North Dakota a bad image, but others are happy the bill did not pass, saying it's a matter of individual religious beliefs, freedom of speech, and the right to business. Valley News Team's Nicole Johnson reports on the continuing debate. Currently, we have a ban that's effective immediately. The ban is for all the men and women who voted no against the Senate bill. Joe Curry, owner of the Red Raven in downtown Fargo, is trying to send a message banning lawmakers who voted against the discrimination law. To highlight the absurdity of uh, that bill not passing. Unless they are accompanied by a lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transsexual person. The fact that we are continuing to um, Continuing to have a second class of citizen um, is absurd in the, in the world that we currently live in. Um, hopefully it'll spark discussion. On our Valley News Live Facebook page, Curry is called out by some saying it's discrimination against people you feel discriminate. Others agree with Curry. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it makes us look like we're judgmental and not accepting of other people, which we should be. And I feel like our community in Fargo normally is but um, not really our state as a whole. Oh, it's sending a, a very bad message as far as North Dakota being open for business. Business learned a long time ago discrimination is not a good thing and it just does not help your business grow. So I'm not sure what effect it's going to have on that, but it certainly is sending a very clear message to any business that's thinking of growing or expanding in North Dakota or trying to attract workers. A majority of people polled on our Facebook page and website say rejecting the bill is giving North Dakota a bad image. And we heard from bill supporters saying business owners are entitled to their own opinion. For Curry, it's not over. We've had a lot of people come in today who wanted to support us by, by shopping here. And he's hopeful lawmakers will pass a bill in the future. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Now there's plenty of time and room for you to comment. Just log on to Valley News Live's Facebook page, like it, and join the conversation. What a day this has been for rural firefighters. We've heard of at least a half dozen fire calls today alone around our area. Several of them were in Clay County, including this one near Highway 75 north of Moorhead. About an acre burned and flames got within 100 yards from a home before being put out. Officials say it started by sparks from a burn barrel. So far, none of the fires today have damaged buildings. No one has been hurt. There are no burning bans in place, although the fire danger in the entire area ranges from moderate to high. We can feel fortunate that the strong winds have moved on, and yet for some parts of the viewing area, they're dealing with the possibility of snow. Let's go to Robert Hahn for the very latest. Robert? Yeah, a little bit of rain and snow shower activity, not out of the question as we head through the rest of the evening. The best chance for those snow showers across the far north, but even there, not going to see a whole lot of precipitation. Our drought is ongoing, and just a little bit of rain and snow is not going to help things much at all. As you mentioned, the winds are lighter today, which is fortunate, especially with some brush fires breaking out. We'll have that chance for a few rain and snow showers this evening. Colder off towards the north, some 20s and also some 30s and 40s mixed in out there. You factor in the winds and we've got wind chills ranging from the teens into the 30s and low 40s. As we head through the evening here in Fargo, temperatures will slowly drop on off. We'll see plenty of cloud cover and maybe a few sprinkles from time to time by the 9 o'clock hour getting down into the mid 30s. We do have some hiccups on that uh, holiday forecast as we head through your Saturday and Easter Sunday, and we'll detail that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we can hold our breath maybe. That'll get yep. rid of them, right? <laughs> okay. Don't forget, you can now get uh, Valley News Live news and weather text alerts right to your phone. You get the latest breaking news, weather, and other updates on your mobile device. Head to valleynewslive.com to sign up. A lobbying group claiming no political affiliation is launching attack ads against DFL lawmakers in key districts in the state with direct mailings, digital ads, and radio spots. The Minnesota Jobs Coalition says they're focusing on border cities like Moorhead, and that means Representative Paul Marquardt is a target. The group says they're simply educating the public about how officials want to raise your taxes for roads and bridges. 
Uh, but we think that through responsible budgeting uh, and through utilizing the state's surplus, uh, we would be able to make those improvements. Now, we did reach out to Representative Paul Marquardt and other DFL lawmakers, but they were not available for comment. The Obama administration unveiled new regulations for hydraulic fracturing, better known as fracking, on federal and tribal lands last month. That sparked outrage from some lawmakers, saying these regulations are burdensome and they're going to hurt the energy sector. Washington correspondent Nick Starling has the story. You may have seen videos like this one, a woman like flicking that. and igniting a flame in her faucet. She says the fracking near her home caused methane to spew into her drinking water. Fracking is a technique of getting natural gas and petroleum from rocks miles underneath Earth's surface through wells of pressurized liquid made of many different chemicals. The Department of Interior announced new regulations in March for the fracking industry. Washington seems to be looking for a solution when there's no problem. Senator John Barrasso from Wyoming is frustrated by this. He says the regulations will hurt the energy industry. They make it more expensive. It's another burdensome level of paperwork, uh, and it just will add to the cost of energy. Here's what the new standards include. Stronger cement barriers between the well and water zones. Require disclosure of chemicals companies use in fracking. Higher standards for storage of waste fluids and measures to lower risk of crosswell contamination. Secretary of the Interior Sally Jewell says the current regulations are more than 30 years old and have not kept up with today's operations. She says with these new rules, it will provide a framework for responsible oil and gas developments. Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke doesn't like the new rules and says the one-size-fits-all model doesn't work. It's about up to about $100,000 a well. And, and what does it provide? What value added does it provide? And the answer is none. Democratic Senator Heidi Heitkamp from the fracking-rich state of North Dakota also doesn't totally agree with the new standards, saying she wants a state-based regulatory system. We have a whole lot of regulations as it relates to casing wells that we need, uh, uh, we need to enforce in, a, in an aggressive way. But as long as the current North Dakota regulations are enforced, I don't have any concern about what would happen with fracking. The Department of Interior says the new rules came from a four-year research process and more than 1.5 million public comments. In Washington, Nick Starling, Valley News Live. Well, there's more than 100,000 oil and gas wells on federally managed lands and 90 percent of them use fracking. These new regulations are going to take place in June. A Northern Valley man shot by police following a high-speed chase in February is out of a Minneapolis hospital and in the Grand Forks County Jail. David Elliott was shot several times after allegedly ramming a deputy's vehicle after being stopped in the parking lot of Altru Hospital. Elliott faces two counts of felony reckless endangerment and one count misdemeanor of fleeing a police officer. He's scheduled to be back in court, his first court appearance in Grand Forks District Court on Monday afternoon. The Jamestown Police Department is warning residents and businesses of counterfeit bills that have been circulating in the community. Police say five reports of fake money were used to buy things in Jamestown. One business was found to have gotten 17 $100 bills that were used to purchase goods. Clerks should watch for multiple large bills that have the same serial number and to remember that real money is never miscut or misprinted. It is Friday, and that means it's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say that this man, Davey Phillips Jr., wanted for felony theft of property. If you know where he's at, call your local law enforcement. Well, there has been some confusion surrounding a shoe repair business in the Valley. A viewer blew the whistle, and this is what we found out. Tom's Shoe Repair, it's located in the West Acres Mall. It has closed its doors, but it plans to finish all orders that they have. According to West Acres, the store will mail out its orders or coordinate a pickup date. If customers have any questions, they are asked to contact 701-306-8795. And if you ever need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and a member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work exposing the truth. A lot of you have Eric Church tickets. He'll be at the Ralph Ingolstead Arena this coming Tuesday, and it will be a record breaker while he's there. When Church takes the stage Tuesday night, it'll be in front of the largest concert crowd that the Ralph has ever hosted. 
Now, with this big crowd, here's what you need to remember. You might want to think twice about parking arrangements. General on-site parking will be available for 10 bucks, but area businesses will be running shuttles to the concert. Uh, doors will open at 6 o'clock. Church will be taking the stage around 7.30. For a complete list of area businesses running shuttles, go to Valley News Live and click on the hot button. Should be a fun concert. I'll say. Well, later on Valley News Live at 6, we'll tell you how you could be eating a bit healthier this Easter weekend. We've got some cloudiness out there and a few rain and snow showers. That'll all start to decrease as we head through the next few hours. By tomorrow morning, parts of the area will see clear skies, and that's good news for those wanting to take a look at a lunar eclipse early tomorrow morning. I'll show you who has the best chance of seeing that eclipse coming up right after this.